the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service on this accession day where we mark the anniversary of the reigning monarch taking the throne, which in this case of Her Majesty the Queen, who was um, enthroned on the 6th of February 1952. And it is particular fitting to celebrate this anniversary in 2022 as it marks the beginning of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Her and our spiritual life begins with an invasion of grace out of God's sheer unmerited love. And as we direct our lives towards the light, we become more aware of our sin in order to embark on our mission as vehicles of God's salvation for the rest of the world. And so in preparation for the service, let us pray. Loving God, you have led us to this place, not to shield us from difficulties in human life, but to heal us and inspire us till we see the world as you do and love it with your love through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. You raised the dead to live in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray with our special prayer for today, the Collect. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Peter Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Peace be with you, everybody. Now, our Luke passage for today is a kind of an account that speaks of the spiritual life in an iconic way. Um, we have, if we would have had the full set of readings, which we have at our 11 o'clock service, we would also have the reading from the prophet Isaiah. And in the prophet Isaiah reading, there is a call that summons the prophet to a life to serve God. And he is in a temple and he is praying, but something happened to him. It did not, he did not make it happen. It didn't, he didn't invent how to make it happen by following some sort of set of exercises to make sure it would occur. It just happened to him through a breakthrough of grace. And so it goes in the spiritual order, the spiritual life authentically never begins with our own exertions. And beware of anybody that says, here is a 10 step process in the spiritual life that is putting way too much stress on our own ego and our own accomplishments. But God breaks through, God breaks through into people's life. And that invasion of grace does happen and changes lives. So looking at our gospel reading, the crowds are pressing in on Jesus, listen to God's word at the lake of Gennesaret, and there are two boats and Jesus goes into Simon's boat. We may take it for granted that Jesus goes into that boat, but rethink the passage. The boat in those days is the most prized possession any fisherman can own. It is their livelihood and Jesus just goes into that boat without invitation or asking for permission and then he is barking orders at them. It's like owning a very fancy car and somebody just goes in and starts telling you what to do. But though it goes in the order of grace, that is the invasion of grace when Christ decides to get into your boat. The boat here, think of it as symbolizing your life, your personal life, your private life, your professional life, your public life, your livelihood. Just Jesus decides to get into this boat and to give orders. After all, he is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not our servant. That is a game people always like to play. 
oh sure, Jesus is great as long as he serves my needs, as long as he fits neatly into my spiritual program. When Jesus gets into your boat, he begins commanding. Simon says to Jesus, look, we have been fishing all night and have caught nothing. Right, that is the way it goes. As long as I am in charge of my life, I make all the decision, my program, my plans. Of course, I catch nothing. Jesus takes over one's life, begins commanding. He always commands us to go out into depth. Most of us are only playing around in a shallow puddle. But when Jesus gets into your boat, he sends you out into deep waters. And it is there, of course, that Simon and his companions catch this wonderfully full net of fishes. And that is the spiritual life. As long as you are in charge, you catch nothing. Allow Christ to get into your boat. Follow his commands and you will find riches upon riches upon riches. One of the saints, Catherine of Siena, is often portrayed with a boat on her shoulder. She was a Dominican tertiary and mystic who lived in Italy in the 13th century and she was known for her holiness, her asceticism and spiritual visions. She was also a reformer and political activist and she was influential in religious and political affairs of the church. She gave counsel to the high and mighty, to the poor and needy. She calmed disputes, appeased a great number of violent hatreds and terminated many bloody enmities. And two Roman pontiffs esteemed her so highly that they charged her with several negotiations. Now today is Accession Day. On the 6th of February 1952, Queen Elizabeth was called to the throne to serve God and country. And like Catherine of Siena, she has carried that ship, that boat, tossed by heavy political storms with exceptional navigation skills. She herself summed up how she was able to do that. And I quote from Her Majesty's 2014 Christmas message. For me, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life, a role model of reconciliation and forgiveness. He stretched out his hands in love, acceptance and healing. Christ's example has taught me to seek, to respect and value all people of whatever faith or none. Amen. I would now like to invite you to join me in singing the national anthem in honour of Her Majesty's 70s Platinum Jubilee. let us profess our faith by saying together the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and in earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, thank you for the light, the strength, hope and joy you have given us for this day 
and evermore. Help us to focus on you, truly enabling us to know you and your plan so that we may learn from your wisdom and knowledge. We are grateful for the life you have given us through our faith in you, the bread of life. As we reflect over the last two years of the pandemic, the struggles, the hardship, the fear, anxiety and loss, painful as it is and was, through our faith in you, we have grown to be mindful of the needs of our neighbours, friends and families, the people we meet, practising compassion, forgiveness, understanding, patience and kindness. May we continue to follow your path. We praise and thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful, loving God, give strength and praise to our gracious Queen on her 70th, 70th anniversary today. We thank her for her loyalty, faith and guidance in her duties to this country as Supreme Governor of the Church of England. Through your unfailing love for all, please guide our leaders here and throughout the world. Give them the foresight and wisdom that they act in a fair and just way for your people, our world, your creation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, teach them to be mindful of the decisions they make, particularly in relation to the unrest in the Ukraine and Afghanistan. We pray for your protection and in hope for world peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know every one of us here in Staplehurst. Forgive us for our shortcomings, but know that we are faithful. We look forward to this new year and strive to do what is right in your eyes as Christians. Dear God, we are humbly rich in our church life and community through you, Reverend Silka, Reverend Monica, leading and guiding. We stay strong and supportive of each other of all ages and backgrounds. The inspiration and encouragement given is something we are truly grateful for. We pray that the fundraising for our church and its repairs grows from strength to strength, working together, praying together. We ask that your Holy Spirit encircles us all, helping us to uphold our church and community together. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God who heals, through the Holy Spirit, comfort all those that are sick and dying, frightened because they are ill or in pain, for those awaiting a diagnosis or treatment. Provide them with support, with a support system. Let them know they and their families are important and that they matter and are not alone. We pray they feel your arms of healing love, comfort and support surrounding them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we remember all those who are suffering who have died and rest in your arms peacefully and quietly in our hearts, those that are known to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray as our Father has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth. 
give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.